Hi everyone. I'm, I'm making this video because I was inspired by my friend Beetle Brad. He showed his copy of this uh, and I have one as you can see. I've had one for many many years. This is uh, an album that I've owned. One of the originals that I've had in my old collection of the Beatles from way back when. As some of you know I sold my early Beatle collection that I had in the early 2000s. I actually went to the record store that I usually record. Uh, I called the guy there, the owner, Bazooka Joe. Uh, first time I ever saw Joe, first time I ever met Joe. And I, back then, in the early 2000s, I sold most of my, almost all of my Beatles collection on vinyl to him. And I sold a lot on eBay. Anyway, this particular album, he rejected he didn't want to buy it because he said it was a fake. And, I mean, I've had this, as I say, I think I bought this in the 1980s. I probably bought it somewhere in Greenwich Village in the 80s, and I was very young. And I've always thought it's a fake, a counterfeit, so therefore, I've never paid it much mind. But I've been watching some videos by Beetle Brad, and also by Beetle Dave, I think, and uh, I'm trying to figure this out. I've never been 100% sure, so let's go through this today. Sorry for wasting so much time on one shot here, but I wanted to talk and get this dialogue out of the way, okay? So here it is. We're talking about Animate Limited. John Lennon sings the great rock and roll hits. The Roots album, it's called. Now... You can read about the history of this and how they put this out without John's permission. There was a lawsuit and all that. It's a very controversial history to this. But uh, some of the telltale signs that I've heard you have to look for, what really confuses me about this is a lot of these check all the boxes for me as if it's a legitimate copy. But like for one thing, you have to look here at John's shirt in the corner, and you have to make sure that you see some of his arm there. You see the arm? You can see his shoulder, I should say. As long as you see some skin there, and you see John Lennon's shoulder, that identifies it as an authentic copy. The bootlegs, or most of them anyway, do not have John's skin show in there. So that's one telltale factor that checks out. Over here, you got to look, make sure, and the camera may not do this justice, but uh, you have to make sure it's very clear and identical the word stereo i'm trying to focus really good on this i can't do it but trust me everything here is very identifiable you have to make sure the letters don't bleed together this does not bleed together uh it's very sharp although the camera doesn't really pick that up you know trying to really focus it next thing is the spine you have to make sure the spine says and mine does, but it's very thin. That's one of the reasons why I think this could be a bootleg, because it's so thin. It has to say, John Lennon sings the great rock and roll hits. See, mine says that. It checks that box. John Lennon sings the great rock and roll hits. If it says greatest, John Lennon sings the greatest rock and roll hits. It's a, it's a fake. And as you can see, that's the title, great. And you got great there as well. But it's very thin, you know, it's not, the, the, you know, the spine is not a little wider like it should be. That's the one thing I wonder, too, about when it comes to the spine. All right, so, so far, I think everything pretty much checks out all right here. And you flip it over, and this is, this is the factor I'm most concerned about here, why I think this is a fake. And why, this is the reason why Joe at the record store decided to pass on this. This is why he said back in the early 2000s, no, nah, this is a phony copy. I don't, I don't, I don't want this. Um, now, when you look back here, all of these are supposed to be pretty clear. Or I say all of these. The, the photographs of these records here, advertising past records, 20 solid gold hits, Soul Train, Super Tracks, it's supposed to be very, very clear or at least, well, if not 100% clear, let me let me restate that. If not 100% clear, uh, clear enough that you can read the titles. That's where mine fails to test. I mean, if you go really close here, you really just can't read that. It, 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 this, is this unfortunately, is not giving good indication. I'm doing the best I can here, getting as close as I can. This one in particular here. 
Uh, you, see, you see it's fuzzy. But they're all fuzzy. Even uh, copies that claim to be originals still are fuzzy. Uh, you see, you can't really read that. No matter how close you get, that's the, the factor that makes me think this is a, a, a fake. You can't really read that no matter how close you get. And it's blurry overall. I mean, these letters are all clear. Now, Beetle Brad in his video showed this. is that if you can read these, you have an authentic copy. I, Brad, I think you were mistaken. I think the idea is you have to be able to read these. Okay? And as you can see, you can't. So that's that's why Joe said, forget this. I'm not buying these. But, I, I, you know, I think I don't know because everything else checks out. And now we're going to look at the actual record album itself. And we'll talk about some of the details there, all of which I'll check out on mine. Okay, here we are with the record. And first thing you have to look at is that the label is a normal size. If the label is too big, it looks oversized for a record of the 1970s, it's probably a fake. This one, the label looks perfectly normal. It looks great. It doesn't look like it's fake label. Um, as you get closer here, I wish I, could, I wish I could get a little closer. Uh, clearer, I mean, for focus. Not easy. Everything here checks out. Now, I've seen some of these where on the edges here, the edges kind of like break off. And go into the dead wax and look really sloppy. That's not the case here. Um, now, also, the most telling factor is the uh, dead wax, which I'll get to. Okay. Going to be very tough to do this, people. Let me just... You have to be able to read the number there. Um, trust me, it's here even if you can't see it. I'll try it this way. I'll try it this way. Mm, tough. Without editing, I don't want to edit. Okay. Okay. You should be able to read the letters. There it is. A. 8018A. 8018A. A. 8018A. It's there. And then there's supposed to be bell sound. Now, the camera can't pick this up, but... It's in script letters there. It does say bell sound, albeit it's really hard to see here. It's in script. It looks like a little scripty kind of thing. Bell sound. It's there. There it is. The best I can do here. Very small. And then I have something here that says, looks like it says Joe, J-O-E. Also scripted in there on mine, but nobody's talking about that. Very hard to see. I'm sorry I can't get it better. All right. Now, on Beetle Dave's video, he said that every original, somewhere over here on side one, has an etching that says A8018, like an indication. Uh, very, very hard to see, almost impossible, but you can see it. He took a photo of it. And I've searched this LP high and low, and I can't see that. I can't really find that. I really checked it on the edges, but right where he showed it here. He said it was, I think, an etching under the label, and it shows over the top, but I just can't find that. But it does have the, again, impossible to show you here, but it does have bell sound over there. You can barely see that there on the right. And uh, it does have A8018 etching here. I also forgot to mention that one of the other indicating factors is that you're supposed to see white in here, kind of white board inside here, and it is white. The record cover is not too, too thin, not too flimsy, and the inside with the white poster board or whatever it's called, I don't know if you could see up there once again, trying all the way up there inside on the left there is a you can see the way it folds in there like you know i don't know if that's supposed to be in there the uh, the inner sleeve by the way that i have is this it's not it's, i think there was a designed inner sleeve right uh my inner sleeve is white just plain old white 
Uh, that doesn't really mean much. Uh, there could have been an original inner sleeve in here at one time and it was taken out and replaced with this white sleeve. So there's no way to know that. But as you can see, I'm in quite the dilemma here because for, what, 40 years or so now I've had this album. And in the past 40 years, I've always figured I got a counterfeit. But, you know, there's just something about this that a lot of the boxes checked positive. So I don't know. What do you think? Thank you for watching.